Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Pokemon 2000. From 2000. Or Pokemon the Movie 2000. And this was a winner of the Patreon movie review vote. If you would like for me to review a movie of your choice, then click on the link below and pledge, and maybe I'll be reviewing your movie next month. This winner was selected by Austin. So I reviewed uh, previously, previous winner, was uh, Pokemon the first movie. And I have nostalgia for that movie because I saw it um, with, I took my brother and his friends and I saw that movie in theaters and I was watching the cartoon show every morning and I was super, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't play the games, but I was at least sort of into Pokemon and at least the cartoon. <laughs> and you know, I saw the movie and I had nostalgia for it. I remember doing that and it's a fond memory. Uh, Pokemon 2000, I have literally, no nostalgia for it all. Uh, when I text my brother if he'd even seen it, he said, uh, <laughs> nah, I didn't, and uh, that he only does OG Pokemon, at least cartoon-wise, so he didn't even see it. So I have nothing to go on nostalgia-wise this time. There's, there's nothing here in terms of that. This is not going to be like that at all. Um, I think at the time, like Pokemon was really big with my little brother in the late 90s, in 99 and stuff, but by the summer of 2000, uh, Dr. Dre's Chronic 2001 came out and, you know, Juvenile made back that thing up and he was way more into hip hop. And I think Pokemon 2000, you know, not as good as Dr. Dre's Chronic 2001. I think we can all agree on that. I'm sure, I don't know if anyone's ever vocalized that, but I'm here to, to set the record straight on that one. So this is going to be a different <laughs> review than the last one. So I think when watching this, is I knew, I knew what this was, is it is a movie of a popular cartoon show that also sells trading cards and it's a video game and toys and probably a couple other things. But it's basically like you're used to these movies of a popular cartoon show and then they become a movie and it's a certain thing. And my bar, the bar is a little lower critically under that sort of weird commercialized genre, basically, uh, which is a commercial, so... <laughs> It's literally a fucking commercial. They made the cartoon to sell the trading cards to play, sell the video games. Like people complain about the '80s, but Pokemon, Jesus, that's what it is. And so a lot of the plot dynamics and plot devices in this that I think would bother someone else who's critical of it or liked it as a kid and now understands film construction a little better or claim to um, or think they do that this movie is like bad or something um and it's like not good but i think under the guise of this is a blank a blank the movie which it depending on how you feel about it, i think the real title is pokemon the movie 2000 it's fine under that it's actually pretty decent um structurally wise there's a few things that i would def i definitely don't think work um but it is interesting when i watched it because i was like there's potential here it is annoying and not having brock in there was a bad which is a mistake he has this very small cameo it it sort of is just you get a big cinematic fight out of it if someone is like the one or whatever they do that a lot who cares stuff like that but it is generally a decent one of these movies i liked it more than i thought i would i my only nostalgia was seeing ads for it on tv and being like oh yeah joe used to like that that's where it stops so i was a little pleasantly met on this one i wouldn't say it is incredible or anything, but you can sign a see potential was sort of almost there. Pokemon, the movie 2000, is about uh, Ash and Misty and other lady are going to this island for reasons, uh, for a re I, who cares, they go to this island and there's a big rich Pokemon collector. He's a collector, not a trainer, and he's trying to get all the best Pokemon because he's a good collector and he, sets up gets two flying pokemon and that brings another flying pokemon and it starts destroying the earth's weather like aquaman 2 or aquaman 2 is like this depending on how you feel about that ash and the pokemon all the pokemon in the world go to this island so i guess ash was going to show up at some point and uh they go to defeat this guy and it turns out ash is the one because it says as the world turns to ash which no one told me that going apparently everyone knew that <laughs> I didn't know that. And then where they go, turns to Ash. His name is Ash. I was like, oh shit, are you for? I didn't see that. I thought you might. I was like, at first, I was like, this is pretty dark. And later, I was like, holy fuck. Did they mean, they mean that guy whose name is Ash? This is wild. <laughs> this is crazy. He's like, 
you thought like that's really dark, but it's actually positive. It's like, and then Ash has to kind of bring back, fight off this collector and restore the world's uh, weather because it's all destroyed because of this guy and his flying Pokemon and stuff. So there's this collector guy whose name, uh, I don't even know what this guy's name is. Anyway, it doesn't actually matter. This guy collector who's like the big villain in this movie, having a good villain <laughs> is literally the difference between this and Pokemon the movie because that is Mewtwo, everyone remembers that, everyone remembers that guy, everyone remembers his design, all that stuff. We talked about Pokemon 2000. This guy, I really thought pretty early on could have been completely cut out of the movie and sort of towards the end, the last 20 minutes, he isn't in it. In fact, I think when it's resolved, I don't remember him coming back or he's just so forgettable. Maybe he did. I like it. I really don't even care about this fucking guy. And it's like, I, I'm very shocked at how much they bungled the villain in this. And I almost wish it had been more interesting if they cut out all of his appearances which are not a part of the main plot line or like off somewhere and just had like when he talks to ash and had they had like a really cool actor who's like chewing scenery and like doing this huge villain monologue with ash and be like oh shit that's the villain and then he just disappeared it would be interesting and i do think like that scene could have been a lot better but had they just cut out all those guys other scenes except for when he meets ash awesome movie to be honest with you like it actually holds back the film a lot because it ruins its own kind of flow and concentration because all the scenes without that guy seem to be moving to a certain perspective and, and he's like such a dead weight on the film like early on i was like someone should just cut him out and then as i real as it progressed i was like well you actually other than one scene i think you could it, which isn't a good sign for a memorable villain but without him it would just be like ash like with the Pokemon, all the best stuff of the movie basically. And none of like this extra fat. I mean, there's stuff with like, we go to this island and there's this other girl and like all this stuff. It's like, really doesn't matter, honestly. Like that's not what you remember about it. Just sort of like filler so they can have it be long enough that everybody sees it, but not too long. So there's enough show times in a day. All that is pretty forgettable. It's sort of like standard Pokemon the show stuff to me. I don't really think it exceeded any of that stuff. But I did, I actually did like the Pokemon fights, the flying ones, that was, got pretty cool. I liked everything with Ash and Pikachu, um, in particular when they're on the big journey with all his Pokemon. I actually thought that tied into the show well. Um, having Tracy instead of Brock, um, it's never a decision I liked, and I do remember my brother getting less into it when Brock left. In fact, actually, the other part of the text message was like, that was probably when I started transitioning off the show because he didn't really like uh, it becoming a different thing. And that actually happens uh, sort of naturally for a lot of people when there's like a show or a property they're into and it changes and suddenly they reevaluate like, well, do I want to go forward? And he chose not to. Um, I was here heard from a lot of places that like oh, 2000 was its biggest year. I didn't experience that and this made less money, although it came out in July and not October, which I don't, I don't understand that methodology because obviously it would have made less and it came out like less than a year. It was like Pokemon the movie came out October 99. This came out July of 2000, so not even a full year. I think there's more time between Break-In and Break-In 2 Electric Boogaloo than there is between the two Poke first two Pokemons. And for me, it's like when it really started to fall off like the prominent cultural relevance, like there are other shows kids were into, there's other things. I know there's like 20 something movies. I really, I remember one after this that didn't get as much advertising. I remember the one where Pikachu talks, I heard about that, but other, maybe that wasn't even a movie. Maybe that was like a special. I, I really like lost the plot after that until like Detective Pikachu or something like that. And it does sort of feel like like a kind of cool last gasp, but I do like the like the journey Ash and Missy and them are going on and dealing with the weather and like it feels like a bigger event almost than the first movie, but in a way like when he's on the journey, I think the flow of that worked a bit better and felt a little more personal, almost just solely focusing on him as much as it does. Um, same with like him with his certain Pokemon, it felt like a little more tied together, like, and get, yes, this doesn't work by itself, obviously. Um, I don't know why you're seeing the second Pokemon movie and being like, why is it this made for me? I'm not a fan person who saw this. Like, I, it, it very much feels like a spinoff from the show and naturally so, but this does feel, I've heard the complaint, like the other one feels like a bunch of episodes, which I'm like, I feel like it's enough cinematic and there's enough added to it that it feels like something special i forget what i said in the first view but in pokemon 2000 it feels more like huge and the stakes are super high and like 
this feels like a movie movie. It feels like how a TV show goes in a movie. They're like, well, you have to make the stakes astronomically high because we're in a movie and stuff. It does very much in comic books. Um, when I read comic books more, it used to be every year there'd be a thing called the annual, which would come out in the summer, be a little thicker, and honestly wouldn't count that much towards natural continuity, and but could still be a big deal. There were better annuals than others, but for the most part, like they're pretty extraneous. And um, I don't know if they even still make those, but <laughs> this feels like that, and that's typically how movies of shows feel. It feels like a better one, and one that like, the action of it, I, I actually kind of liked. Like, I was surprised. I was like, oh yeah, this is, I sort of liked this show at one point. It kind of reminded me of liking the show. But, I mean, I don't have the... I'm not coming from this perspective of almost everyone else who, like, saw it as a kid and are rewatching it as an adult or something. I'm just seeing this now in 2024. I think it's, like, fine. I wouldn't rewatch it. I have no real nostalgia for it, unless my kids are into Pokemon or something. I'd probably more be talking about Pokemon the first movie. I know po Pokemon lasted after this. I was at the 10th anniversary, of course, of Pokemon. But this is towards the end of what I viewed as the cultural relevance at the time. Whether that's accurate based on statistics, I'm not sure because I'm not a Pokemon fan. It, it just didn't feel as popular after that. Maybe it's because the person in my house I grew up in who was into Pokemon stopped being into that. So that's probably a big reason for it. I think it's decent. It's decent at what you want for this kind of movie. I, I actually think it's good. I do think the villain doesn't work. And it kind of could have... I wish they had been a little looser with construction. Because it did feel like they added like certain characters talking. Like you think the bird they're looking for. Whatever it's called. Like they, they add dialogue to that. That seemed like no one was talking to. The villain being added at the beginning. In various parts. They just had like random shit is happening. I feel like it would have added a level of mystery and this film like robs itself of any kind of surprises in terms of like if they'd cut that guy out I'm telling you much more, it would have been different a different kind of kids film but I think like it's you're already making the second Pokemon movie I mean you're probably going to do okay so whatever I, th I think it's like if you look at the guys of what it is it's a decent good time of a movie I guess um other of like you know kids tv shows or properties getting a movie as wonderful as that little genre is i think this probably ranks a little higher than it does lower but is there any reason you need to see this if you're not nostalgia for it or into pokemon fuck no at all um but if you're into it have a good time i think i think you'll have fun uh i just wish it had sort of been constructed a little better but that doesn't mean you can't have a good time so if you've seen pokemon 2000 and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to